Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome back to our next session. Uh, today, we have with us Brittany Braxton. Uh, Brittany is a software engineer at Dual Security, uh, working on internet tools to support our customers. In her spare time, Brittany enjoys drawing and painting. Um, and you can check out her work on Instagram at tnotes.dev. Uh, when she needs a break from staring at too many screens, uh, she can be found playing hide and seek with her cat Coltrane. Uh, Brittany today will talk to us about journaling and how important it can be to the practice of, of her technologies and giving us a moment to pause and reflect on how we're advancing professionally. Brittany, welcome to the live stream. Uh, looking forward to your talk today. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, before we do, I do want to take a pause and just dedicate this talk to you, my mom, um, who passed away 11 years ago. Um, her, uh, her, her day of leaving this earth was June 15th, so this has been a, a very reflective week. Um, uh, she always prided herself in being a domestic engineer, um, and she could always be found, uh, she could sew a dress, uh, cook up a pot of gumbo, and mow the lawn all at the same time. She was very high, high Leo energy. Um, I also want to dedicate this to my husband's grandfather who passed away earlier this year. Um, he was a radio technician during the Korean War um, and always had a lot of really amazing stories to share about his experience being in a uh, segregated army. Um, so yes, uh, I want to celebrate this for, for those who are no longer here with us as well as those uh, who we're all here today to celebrate Juneteenth. Um, as I said, my name is Brittany. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm currently a software engineer at Duo Security. I am a meetup organizer for People of Color Code, which is a meetup group in uh, Chicago. Um, and I'm also a bootcamp grad. Uh, I made the switch from uh, you know, doing customer service uh, into technology um, about four years ago now. Uh, so you may be asking yourself, as we're here today, uh, why are, as a, at a tech conference are we talking about journaling? Um, journaling is really important because it's a great way to process and analyze your progress while keeping a physical record of that progress. Um, the research, there, there is some research about it. Um, one of the, a, a good article to go off of first is from Harvard Business Review, uh, which talks about how um, uh, journaling can be a really great time for leaders to gain uh, insight and unique perspectives, um, as also get a, a competitive advantage, uh, take time to reflect and have foresight, empathy, and anticipation. Um, a lot of what I do is based off of uh, what you may have heard before as the bullet journal method, which was created by a person named Ryder Carroll. Um, they just actually came out with a book last year about the bullet journal method method, which I do recommend. Um, in it, um, he talks about how writing in a journal helps you to check in with yourself and cultivate a process of self-awareness. Uh, bullet journaling is uh, a really a, a great way to just take that time uh, to yourself. Um, a really uh, a quote that I like from him in this book is, um, bullet journaling allows you to clearly see what life, what the rush of life tends to obscure. You can track the decisions you made and the actions you've taken that led you to where you are. Um, it encourages you to learn from your experiences. Um, and we can see that there is um, a trend when it comes to uh, journaling. Uh, we uh, often have an increase in the number of people who Google search it uh, at New Year's. But unfortunately, it always kind of peters out uh, throughout the year. Um, Today, I definitely want you to get started with journaling um, and keep it up for, for the year. And a lot of what I'm gonna be talking about today is uh, focused in a professional sense of me journaling at work, um, but journaling can be really helpful for all different realms of your life, whether it's uh, you journaling about your projects and hobbies, or maybe it's a way for you to stay in sync with your family if uh, you have a really busy family. Um, or maybe you just want to keep a journal about uh, your pets, like uh, uh, maybe your Tamagotchi or your cat or your dog. Um, I've even seen recently that there are some bullet, uh, so there are some journals that people are making about Animal Crossing. Um, so it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty open, um, it's a pretty open end of where this can go. 
Um, and you may ask yourself, well, where, what, 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 what will be the best way to use this, um, analog or digital? Um, I am kind of a, the proponent of going analog by journaling by hand because um, it does give you uh, more time to synthesize your thoughts. Um, it, the uh, action of uh, physical action of using your hand to write things down um, has been seen to uh, have greater impacts of learning and like encoding than you would by typing by computer. Computer typing is a bit more stream of conscious and a lot of deleting. Um, so we don't really get that opportunity to um, really slow down and think about what's going on. Um, which kind of lends to my question of today, how reflective are we as technologists? Um, when, I, when I look around at what we're doing, um, either building software or advancing through this, this field, um, how often are we taking a moment to think about our progress and the process of what we're doing? Um, so this talk will present you with an analog methodology of that to document your daily, weekly, and monthly progress at work with the culmination of generating a low energy performance review about your work. Um, the same strategy gives you the opportunity to effectively track your goals, uh, reflect on the highs and lows of your role as a developer and, and more. So our agenda for this is, uh, I'm gonna talk about how to get started, how to work with impact and purpose with it, as well as a discussion on goal tracking. Um, or tracking accomplishments in terms of goal setting and performance review. Um, first, I'd like to take a little backstory of how I got here with uh, a little gif of my cat Coltrane uh, sitting next to me uh, per programming, as I like to call it. Uh, so for me, I've always had a notebook with me, whether it was middle school or high school, and I've actually saved them all. Um, and most recently, I've even been saving all of my coding journals. Um, for me, when it came, the biggest shift of my journaling came about two years ago when I was working at a large health insurance company. I was on a really fast moving team where I took a lot of notes. I was learning Java, Kotlin, uh, React, uh, Android development, iOS with Swift, um, learning about cloud computing, the list goes on. So I, I just often felt like I need to kind of like write this down or I'm going to forget it. And I need to just really understand what's happening here and break down the pieces. When the time came for our end of the year review for the team, I realized that I had a lot of material to draw from. And I had a, at least two journals worth of notes to just pick from of like, here's what I did. Um, here's how I helped benefit the team. And, and here's what I got out of it. <clears throat> um, let me take a sip of water. My manager said that I uh, did a really good job. Um, and I was describing my progress and contribution to the team more than what he was even seeing from a senior engineers. At the time, I was an associate engineer, total just baby programmer, um, just really trying to learn and, and, and uh, you know, have a fit for the team. So for, to hear those words, it was really encouraging. It was at this point that I realized that there was maybe something magical with what I was doing. I was capturing my doc and documenting my growth. My intense note taking was actually having positive results in my of my career. Um, so I took a moment back and took a step back and said, "Well, how do I learn best? How is it that this is being so effective for me?" Um, well, uh, I feel like I, when I'm when I'm journaling, I can remember things when I write them down. Um, and when I write down the notes, it's definitely sticking with me better than when I type it. I also learn best when I use physical and visual aids um, that are complementary to my learning style. Um, and this kind of, uh, these thoughts do um, connect to broader discussions within, you know, research about learning, research within psychology, and research within neuroscience about uh, different ways that we learn effectively. So, uh, you know, I, I definitely caution, caution and say that um, this may not work uh, the best for you, um, but I do recommend it that you give it a, a shot and just explore it. Because while you're doing this, you may actually identify like, I learned something a totally different way than Brittany, but now you have that journey to get there. And I will be really open to hearing how you what you do out of it. Um, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at how I, how you getting it started. I'm gonna show you my setup. So first, you wanna start with a notebook that sparks joy. 
It can really be anything. Like if you have like a composition notebook, maybe you've got a notebook from a random notebook from a conference. Um, it's good to start with anything. I've got here uh, today, this is my current notebook that I'm rocking. Um, but yeah, um, I like uh, A5 size because it's nice and small. It's got dotted grid notebook paper. Um, so pick what a notebook that you like. Uh, next, you want to number your pages. One of the nice things about this one is that it already comes pre-printed, so I don't have to number my pages. But if you do need to number your pages, I recommend starting off with even. That way you don't have to like sit there and like just write out every page. It can be really monotonous. Um, so I just do evens first and take my time. Um, next, you want to create a table of contents. Um, this is going to be a place at the very front of your notebook where you are going to list where in your journal you can find the high level uh, important things that you need, need to flip to, such as the, the start of a month, or maybe there are some meeting notes that you need to reference frequently. Uh, maybe there's some sort of configuration setup that you need to reference um, for your computer. You don't want to put those kind of things in your table of contents, because then when you go looking for it, you can just come here onto the first page instead of flipping through you know, the 100, 200, whatever number of pages that you have. Um, and, and you know, ultimately, when you're working on a journal, what working with your journal, you want to be looking at it often. Um, you don't want to feel like you need to censor yourself. This is for your eyes only. Um, and you also want to take time to reflect about it frequently. And, and really, that's it. Uh, that's all you need to really get started with. But I'm here to show you some examples. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so. I'm going to first talk about just the daily and then kind of go into broader time chunks. My daily spreads are a lot less structure where I have work notes of whatever I'm countering day to day. I uh, document like my progress with different feature stories or bugs or meeting notes. Um, I'll diagram things. Um, it's just it's just a little bit of everything. Um, there are some days where I write more, some days where I write less, um, but there's really no like uh, goal of, of an amount that I want to record. Um, I will say that I have been having a little bit more structure lately with my daily notes because I'm trying to identify currently where I have the most optimal amount of time to actually develop. Um, I have a lot of meetings with my current job, and so I like to uh, do this kind of outline and use different colors to outline uh, where I have, um, you know, free free blocks in my day. Um, weekly, I this is also something that I've been doing weekly uh, recently. This is this is this week, uh, as you see uh, on the nineteenth, it's June nineteenth. Um, this is kind of what I'm doing right now, um, where I've ripped out a page, I've got it posted onto my laptop, and I'm just kind of looking at it uh, from a sprint perspective. My sprints at work are two weeks long, so I want to see what are the ways that I can um, identify those chunks of time and also be able to capture uh, where I can uh, fit my goals uh, most readily. Um, however, there are some times um, where I do all this, this uh, intentional work and nothing of, of it gets done. Um, I definitely think that's just a, a failure we're celebrating. Um, it doesn't, doesn't mean that you need to give up on it or anything, but just continue to reflect on how, uh, how you can be able to make structure that works effectively for you. Um, next, my monthlies are, are with a lot of structure. Um, where I will either draw out or print out my calendar, and I will uh, list all the high-level important things to know, such as uh, when I'm out of the office, when I'm on call, uh, when I, uh, epic start or end, or any other big events like that. I also write out opportunity, uh, write out a lot of space for myself to get opportunity to have a retro, um, which you can see um, along the lower half of the left-hand page as well as on the right. Um, so you may be asking yourself, what is a retro? So we're gonna be talking about that next. Um, so a retro, I do it weekly. 
um, where uh, a lot of what I do with my weekly retrospectives is uh, based off of this blog post that um, came from doist.com, which is like a, a productivity app. Um, they have a lot of questions in there, which I thought were really helpful because um, it shows, um, it kind of gives me a moment to pause and just think about with intention, like, um, was I able to reach my goals? Was what were kind of the things that were blockers? What are the things to celebrate? It's always good to celebrate the wins. And then what are the next actions? Um, uh, next. Uh, so here's an example of my weekly retro. Um, so I, I have a calendar invite for myself. Like I block out time every Friday for an hour. And I just, I, I, I well, when I was in the office, I would usually like physically remove myself from my desk. I would go somewhere a bit more quiet, make myself a cup of tea and, and just sit down and, and work on these, maybe a little bit of meditation too, if I have time. Um, in this picture, um, I just, I like to show this because uh, just different dynamic ways you can work with your journal. Um, I actually have a, a, a piece of paper taped to the front of my journal and then you can flip it out. And that way when you, it's time for your weekly review, you always have that available. Um, so if I just kind of show here, this is a different journal, different different methods every time I start something new, but you kind of see how it's just on the front cover, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so when it's the last uh, week of the month, I will uh, then kind of change it up a little bit. I'm gonna do a monthly retro. I have a checklist of what I want to go through for that hour where I review my 90 day goals. I'm going to uh, answer some different, slightly different questions about my, my reflection. And then I'm also going to draw out my new monthly spread, um, as you saw in the previous pictures. Um, and, and so I'm not, I'm, I'm, the retros are constantly shifting for me. Um, and so, uh, just kind of like with this GIF, like it's it's always evolving. Um, what I do now is totally different to what I did a year ago. It's totally different to even two years ago. Uh, and so, you know, just keep that in mind as you're going through this is that, you know, everyone's way that they're gonna have a retrospective will look different um, and it may even change. Um, so you may be asking yourself while you're kind of hearing all of this, um, what what do you want me to reflect on? Um, what's really the anchor out of all of this? That's a really good question. Um, your anchor is going to be your goals. So let's go ahead and talk about that with goal setting. A lot of my goals, uh, a lot of the structure of how I write my goals is influenced by uh, Cassandra Macy's 90 day personal goal planner, which if you just uh, Google search her name, uh, you should be able to see this come up. But I'll also include some resources later um, for people. Um, when you're writing out your goals, she says that you want to take some time, like some really intentional time to reflect on your goals. This is not something where you're just like off the cuff, like, oh, what do I want to do for 90 days and just kind of go with it. Um, she recommends like you can go and get a, like a hotel room or maybe go to the spa or go to a, a, a nice coffee shop and just sit down and think about what, what you want to be doing moving forward. Um, she says to identify the areas of growth that you want to focus on. So for me, professionally, I like to think about the different tools and technologies that I'm working on and think about like what are the goals that I want to achieve out of those different areas. Um, and also just like during this time, you're just doing a lot of free writing. Nothing maybe is super set in stone just yet. Um, but once you see some some uh, you know little uh, some little gems of what you want to go with, then that's the time to start to organize and prioritize them. Um, and you want to think about this just in 90 days because it really is just a short enough of a long time. So uh, for me, uh, my, my company right now, we do like quarterly planning and then we work on two week sprints. So I want to be sure that uh, the goals that I set aren't going to outpace what my team is going to be working on because there may become a time where, uh, you know, that's the goals that I have now are not necessarily in line with my team. Um, so here's some examples of what those goal, those goal writing sessions look like, where I have here on the left hand side, seven personal growth areas for myself. This is from my previous job. So, uh, 
Um, it includes things like Java, JavaScript, React. And with each of those sections, I've written out some goals of what I want to work on. Uh, to the left, there is what I call a goal dump, where once again, it's just kind of like free writing. It's maybe not even everything that I wrote in the same day. It's, sometimes it's just like an idea pops in my head and like, you know, I really would like to explore that. I'm going to write it here. Um, and once you pick those goals that you're like, yeah, this is something I want to do. This is this is really what I want to work on for the next 90 days. You're going to create a goal achieving plan. Um, and so I like to start off with a SMART goal, um, which is an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, irrelevant, and time bound. It's already time bound because we say 90 days, right? So the other letters are the things that we want to focus on on this page. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to identify what my personal growth area is. I'm going to list uh, the start date of it as well as the end date when I do achieve it. Um, and um, any projects that I need to go through and the action steps. So you see with this picture here, I, I started a goal on May 16th and I finished it by August. And it was a really exciting win because of of uh, talking about this with my manager. I already had all the materials ready. It wasn't something just floating in my head. You know, I, I, I lay out my, my notebook and I say, hey, look, this is what I want to do. How can I achieve it? So I've got these goals. I'm breaking them down into 90 day chunks. And I'm thinking about them month to month, week to week and day to day to know how I get there. And, you know, a lot of this is, is ultimately taking these big dreams that we have of like, oh, wouldn't it be awesome to be a senior software engineer? Wouldn't it be awesome to be uh, become a consultant? Um, you know, these are these are there's definitely opportunities for us to take these steps um, to make them into realities. Um, so ultimately, time is going to go on. We're going to take an opportunity for a drink break, and uh, eventually, at your job, you're going to come up to with a performance review. And usually, people say that this is a very scary like a very scary moment. There's it's always overwhelming. Um, don't worry, just take a deep breath. Uh, so with all of this, all that I've been saying, you've got the receipts now of the frequent reviews, the ability to uh, just kind of flip through and see like, what do you have to offer? Um, and so when it comes down to whatever performance review you have, you have the documentation to prove like, hey, I deserve this perform this uh, this promotion or, um, you know, hey, uh, whatever you're trying to assert, you know, you, you should be able to see that listed within your, your, your journal. Um, however, I'm going to be honest too and say, maybe this isn't going to always be the most straightforward, I wish, in a perfect world. Um, but how you track what makes you successful throughout the year does uh, depend on uh, what your company expects out of you. So, um, you know, if any of this feels really uncomfortable and you're like, gosh, like, this isn't working, like, um, I would say, like, that's a good opportunity to take a pause and say, well, maybe I should have a discussion with myself, um, kind of like what Valerie was talking about earlier today with imposter syndrome, uh, or maybe it's a time to discuss this with my manager, or, you know, ultimately, maybe it's time to move on to another, another opportunity, another company. And you may be asking yourself, Brittany, do you just want me to just continue to write on and on and on about how awesome I am? And uh, yes, yes, I do. You want to continue to talk about uh, the wins, the highs, the lows, everything. Because as I said before, it is for your eyes only. Um, a lot to, throughout all of this, I was able to identify that um, I'm able to create structure within the chaos. As an engineer, everything is always changing. Um, so I now have confidence from that to know what to move forward on. Um, I do want to give a, prefer uh, a caution and say, don't look at what you see on like Instagram or Pinterest. A lot of really cute stuff, but um, that kind of distracts from what we want to get with journaling. Um, here are some uh, places that you may like to check out. Once again, I'll say uh, you, can, you can look at this later. Um, if you don't like to see uh, trees uh, use, use paper, um, here are some examples of some uh, digital bullet journals. Um, the ones that are starred are some of my favorite right now on the iPad. That includes Notability, Paper, and Zinnia. And if you're still asking yourself, um, how can I get started with journaling? 
you want to you want to uh, consider like has there ever been a time where you um, you never felt like you were necessary or you didn't know what your progress was six to twelve months or you're trying to jump into a new field perhaps you're a coder newbie well maybe you should consider journaling as a dev thank you